Donegal, home to the first Eurostar winner, Mickey Joe Hart, and our first audition of Series 2. The judges arrived, the hopefuls queued, and the public voted Clada and Gary Philbin through as their first finalists. Then it was on to Ennis, where in true Eurovision style, the judges arrived in minis. Louise was an especially fetching blue. This is my one dream, to get on Tilly and to meet the fabulous Ray Darcy. And if I could be so bold, give him a peck on the cheek. On the <laughs> mm, I hope that doesn't start a trend. Again, the hopefuls queued, and again we saw how difficult it is to audition. God, I want the people going there, sorry. I didn't get through anymore. I wasn't good enough. I'm a little nervous. Sorry, I forgot some words. Hey, hey, hey. I'm sorry. I've actually got a blocked ear and I can't hear myself properly. My heart's going like the clappers. And then sings my soul, my soul. And then the judges saw one guy who they thought had something, but they weren't quite sure what. This is not a good idea. This is this is this is this is not working. This is not a good idea. This is, this was a bad choice. Okay. I'd like you to sing something else. Right, pick the note. When apples still grow in November... It was a certain approach that I knew I had ran a lot of risks. I remember coming out and saying it was like playing a football match. I didn't think I played all that well, but I might have done enough to win the game. Is then that our land will be free? Linda? There's a lot of power there, tremendous amount of power, which um, I think you could do a little bit of controlling a bit mm. better. But you know something, overall, I, I quite like the sound of your voice. It's slightly different to what we've had before today. Yes. I'd like to put you through. We'll put you through. OK. Thank All right, James. Thank you. He's a diamond in the rough, no doubt about that. And so began James Kilban's Eurostar journey as he joined Ruth to become the Ennis finalists. Next up was Longford. Home to our Midlands auditions. We're here to audition and hopefully we'll be the next Eurovision song contestors. <laughs> Going through to the final was Philip Noon and Colin Fahey. Then to Waterford, where Phil, Louie and Linda were taken for a ride around the Crystal City. queue so far, there was a face at the head of the queue that was soon to become very familiar. Back for one more time. Hi, Hello. Chris. How are you? Hey, what have you done to your hair? I changed it <laughs> since last year. Yeah. I slightly spiked this more of it. Tiny bit. What are you going to sing? Um, I'm going to do a number by Colin Ray called In This Life. It's <clears> a really <throat> good song, Chris. So off you go. If it all falls apart I will know deep in my heart The only dream that mattered had come true Cause in this life I was loved by you Cause in this lovely, life... Lovely, 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 Chris. Thank you very much. I liked it. A little less of the, the American country accent would have been right. almost perfect, but I did like it here. So it's a yes for me. You're a really good singer. You've got great potential. And um, is this your first audition, is it? No, no I auditioned last year. I auditioned last year yeah. in Kilkenny. Yeah. Well, you know, you should have got through. If I was there, I would have put you through in Kilkenny. You did get through. Did you? Get through to the last day. Did you? Got through the last day. Really? We, did, we yeah. struggled somehow through without you last year, Okay. <laughs> well, I would have put him through because I think he's... We a... did put him through. <laughs> okay. It's three yeses. So You're true. Well done. Okay, bye -bye. Good, Chris. Bye. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. good, isn't he's he? good. He's good. He could be great. He mm. could be groomed. I don't know how to love him. 
It was a little bit nervous because, I, you know, I just hadn't been to any kind of audition like that before. It was just a bit different for me, just the cameras and everything like that. I wasn't used to it. Yes, really changed. Yes. yes. Yeah, three yeses. I, I remember watching myself and saying, oh, my God, the amount of makeup I had on my face. <laughs> I, was, I looked so brown and the rest of me was kind of white. And I was like, oh, God. I was like, sugar, I wish somebody told me. Like, But um, other than that, though, I was happy enough with it. <laughs> And happy she should have been as she made her way to the Helix, followed by Phil and Jill. I got pipped again this year, again, you know, at, at the audition, which I said, it's part of show business, and if you can't take the knockbacks, don't be in the business, you know. And so to Dublin, where Louis borrowed a few of the Westlife company cars and arrived at Temple Bar in style. We had over 600 people in Waterford last week. We're here in Temple Bar. I wonder if we have a big crowd in Dublin. And where else but in Dublin would you find the boy the nation is now calling the new Luke Kelly? George Murphy. Yeah. What are you singing, George? Singing Raglan Road. All right, George, <coughs> go ahead. On Raglan Road, on an autumn day, I saw her first and knew... Ita that they think, like, what's he doing singing this kind of song? Like, everybody else is coming in singing Flying Without Wings and stuff like that, like Garrett Gates and Will Young and all. So I thought, like, maybe they're, like, they're not going to want it. And I said, like, I, at the last minute, I was going to change it to something more pop. I was actually thinking of singing Unchained Melody. And I was going to go in and do that. But um, just before I went in, a fella in the queue said to me, um, said, don't change it the last minute, you might regret it. So I stuck with it and I went in, I sang Raglan Road, and it's just, like, I think... That's what got me here. I honestly think if I'd have sang, if I'd have changed my mind at the last minute and sang that song in the first round, I don't even think I would have got by the first round. Of the day. That's loads. Yeah, that's I, how to sing that's an different. Irish song. He's different than anybody else we've had today. Yeah. And you know, you could have a huge future. What age is Seven then. Well done. This guy has it. Superb. Ten out of ten. You got it nailed, son. Thanks very much. Yeah. He's got everything going. Yeah. You're going to get a recording career out of this, I reckon. And so with their Santa hats on, Gary O'Malley and George Murphy got an early Christmas present of a shot at stardom. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. We asked our three esteemed judges to select someone who they reckon has that something special, but weren't voted through by you at home before Christmas. Linda Martin won the toss and went first. And this is exactly how Linda's choice got the good news. Let's hope there's no, there's no Alsatian or something around you. But anyway, we're going to go across the neighbor's fence. No, not your living god, Laura, but certainly something of a guardian angel. Laura Brophy, I want, I want you to be my wild card. When you put somebody through like this, you just keep thinking, did I imagine that they looked so good? Did I imagine that they could sing so well? And I'm pleasantly surprised. I really am delighted that you performed so well. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Phil moseyed into a recording studio to ask four young guys a question. There might very well be a riot. After I get the news, don't keep your head down. Anything can happen. This is going to be wild. It should be quiet. You will think after the clock. Uh, 
the words wild card mean anything to you? <laughs> 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 I tell you, on that performance, it's hard to believe that those guys have only been together a matter of weeks. I think they've got a hunger and they've got the, the right attitude, and I think that's been proven since I put them through as a wild card. They've worked very hard. Well done, guys. You didn't let me down. If I was doing a white boys sing Motown, these guys could sing any of the Motown songs of the 60s. And if I was putting a show like that together, I'd come looking for these guys. They're fantastic. She gave me love, love, love. Love, crazy love. She gave me love, 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 crazy love. Tell me, did you sail across the sun? Did you make it to the Milky Way to see the lights all fading? And that heaven is over. It's great on a show like this to see somebody coming fully rounded and ready, you know, somebody who's ready to grasp it and go for it, and you really, really did. I thought you were terrific. And so to our studio finals, 13 contestants, and the first of our goodbyes was to Gary Philbin. Sorry about this, Gary. Going to Okada. Once again, Ray, I'm completely wrong-footed, completely wrong-footed. I would have thought that Gary was a certain. I think all our judges will agree that Gary has definitely got a future in the music industry. Follow me. I'm looking for 135. I think it's up here somewhere. There's 159. We're in the right place anyway. It's the one with the, uh, the basket outside. So I have to sneak in. This, this is 135. I was sitting at home watching the TV. I just never forget the doors just open. All I could see was just the camera just being zoomed around to me. And next thing you was there, and I just couldn't even speak. I was just complete and total shock. I couldn't talk. I was talking like someone with a high pitched voice for, for about a half hour. I just couldn't speak at all. Is this your mother? <laughs> I want you to give this 100. I will. I'll give it 110. I think you have what it takes. I want it to do. Don't worry. I want it to do. I'm really glad I picked him as a wild card because I think he's got a raw talent and I think on the live shows he's really going to prove himself. And um, I think we're going to have a new star here. And she believes in me I'll never know just what she sees in me A young guy with a big voice, a big future. I hope everybody in Waterford votes for him. He could win Eurovision. He's young Johnny Logan. Superb. I think that sums it up. There's a huge voice there with a huge range, great control. He's learning how to smile, aren't you? Yeah, I thought he was brilliant. He's super. But who knows, maybe on some special night, if my song is right, I can find. So, a good first live outing for Chris, but it wasn't like that for all our contestants. Ladies and gentlemen, singing The Times They Are Changing, it's George Murphy. Come gathering people wherever you go And admit that the waters around you have grown 
It was my first time performing live in front of an audience and it's like as though the tune completely went down my head when I got up on that stage and everybody was just looking at me. I was just like, oh no, I have to come in now. And I came in, I started it wrong again. And admit that the waters around you have grown and accept it that soon. You'll be drenched to the bone. The worst thing that ever happened in my life. You will tell Like, that's something I know all across the world. Like, I'm just completely screwed up. <laughs> screwed up twice. Sink like a stone for the times. They are a changing. Come, writers and critics who prophesize with your pens. And keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again. Don't say a word. Hey, he came back from a bomb note and saved the song. It's naming. Oh, the loser now will be later to win. For the times they are a change. I think George is raw talent. I think he's fantastic. I think he's going to top the pole tonight. And the winner of this evening's Eurostar, George Murphy. I actually think it might have actually worked out better for me. But I think people saw that he made a mistake and he actually, like, fair play to him. He stood up there and he, and he took it and he kept going. I think that's actually why I topped the pole that night. Sorry about this, Colin. I don't think he deserves to be going home, but somebody has to go home. I, I can't give you an answer why they got through and you didn't, but it's a public vote and that's it. Give him the best shot, that's all I can do, you know? That's all I need them to do. Yes, week three, and there were 11 acts left. I can't fault them musically, as I say, but just there is something lacking dynamically. I don't see the star quality. I don't sound, want to sound cruel, girls, but that's the way I call it. Well, that might come over the weeks. Linda? Who knows? In a folk song situation or folk group situation, you're very good. But I don't think you've got much better since your very first audition that we did up in Letterkenny. And that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for people who are going to raise the bar every week. And girls, from, from my point of view, it's not happening. We're going to get a big vote from Donegal. And the song was good. And come on, the chorus had to start off somewhere as well. Thanks very much. Listen, this girl, she looks fantastic. The camera absolutely loves her. She reminds me of a, an Irish Shania Twain. I think she'd win the Eurovision if she got through. Do you? I do, yeah. Honestly, with the right song, Linda. I know, that's good. You gotta stand up straight, carry your own weight. For these tears are going nowhere, baby. You've got to get. I'm sure you two would be very amused if they heard his version of the song. I mean, he's got a great voice, but I didn't really like it. Sorry. Hey, Linda. Wouldn't have chosen that song for James. I think, I think there's other material, other types of songs that he'd be absolutely perfect for. But it was his choice, nothing to do with me. You know, no matter, no matter what Louis or Linda and I think, there's one thing for sure, that the great Irish public love what's going on with James. Uh, Don't say that letter will be better You got stuck in a moment and you can get out of it. He lays me up so I can stand on mountains. 
all of the, the music teachers and all of the conservatoires in the world can't teach you to sing like that. Uh, Ruth has got such a glorious, natural voice. It's a God-given thing, and she's just got a natural appeal. I'm glad to see her singing without the guitar as well tonight. That's a great choice of song. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> more than I can be. This is good stuff. Super loud. Um, Louis, Louis, you know a thing or two about boy bands? Yeah, I think the boys are absolutely great. They've worked very hard at Array. People at home don't understand that these four boys were rejected individually. They're together as a band. They're fantastic. And I think they got a big career with or without your vision. If I was giving you votes out of ten at this moment in time, I'd give you nine. You're almost there. I enjoyed that very much. That's good. It was good. It's, it's more Bunratty than Eurovision for me, you know. Okay. She moved through the fair. Um, it's a lovely song, but um, maybe it just wasn't right for television, I think. Um, and I'm after learning, you know, you, you learn from these things. I've never loved before. Yeah, I love singing the Irish number. Um, the Sweet 16 number was, I think, one of the most, uh, my most favourite weeks. Come to me, ere my dreams of love is over. I love you. When the pressure's on, he'll deliver. I thought that was very good. Now you know why I picked him. He's a real singer. He's just, he's perfect. And Waterford needs a new star. So people of Waterford, get a new star. Mandola. Yes. Halfway between a mandolin and a bazooki. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that be called a mandoza then? <laughs> it's nice to hear, it's a lovely flavour. It gives an indication of, of the talent of these two. I think they have uh, I think they have a lot of potential together. I think they have, they have a likability, which is a very important quality here. Pace was too slow. I thought it dragged terribly. But I've enjoyed working with you two really uh, enormously over the last few weeks. And um, I sincerely hope you do well in the public vote tonight. Ooh. Slide of fin, then a twist of fate, and a bit of nails, she makes me wait. And I'll wait. Uh, two guys from Mayo in, in tonight. You have Gary and you have James, both singing U2 songs. This is much better than the first U2 song. Well done. 10 out of 10. Thank you very much. You looked as if you were in pain. I felt your pain. Sorry. Yes, the ante was up, so too was the pressure, as poor Philip Noon discovered. I didn't make it look like I knew it was a mistake. I was, I was so stupid. Of me. I could see people cringing for me and I just knew what they were feeling. I just wanted to be somewhere else, anywhere else. 
She's colder than November. As never she would I knew I was in the wrong key and I didn't want to stop because then I thought then people were thought I was in the same pretty mood. And I didn't I don't want that. When Philip auditioned for us, I said at the time I thought it was too soon and he's too young and I think we've put him through an ordeal tonight that he's not ready for and I blame Louis because he made me vote for him. He made me let this kid... <laughs> yeah, I'm but serious, Louis. Phil. That's too, the kid is too young. I still think he has potential. He was out of tune, but he still has potential. And Philip, please do something to restore my confidence. <laughs> There's nobody in this whole contest that has got more likability than George. Um, and being, being a huge a huge Luke Kelly fan as I am, and having worked with Luke for many years, every time I hear George saying, I can't help thinking of Luke, I think he's a unique item, George, and I'm very fond of him. I remember Dublin City. Linda, who topped the poll tonight? For the second week in a row, George Murphy, top of the ball. Hello, guys. Hello. My heart went out to Philip tonight because I've been there. I know what he feels like, and he's such a lovely young guy. He really is. He's a smashing guy. Kids, what you've got to take out of this is you're all very young. This is a cruel business. And you want to learn from this. You want to learn that, that disappointments and, uh, and surprises are part and parcel of it. And go forward with the confidence that you have the ability. The further our budding stars got, the sadder their farewells became, as Philip and Clada found out on week three. With nine left, week four saw the bar being raised as we entered the Manny Hall. More than a thousand people and hundreds of banners. song to sing with emotion. I think she did really well. I think this is Laura's best week yet. I'm dead proud I picked this in my wild card. I thought you were wonderful. I agree with Linda. This is, Laura, this is your best performance so far. Some comfort here. Ladies and gentlemen, singing King of the Road, it's James Kilban. <laughs> If I had any comment, I thought that James was just a bit kind of wooden with the song because it's a, it is a quirky song, it's supposed to be sung a little tongue in cheek. But you know, it doesn't really matter that, uh, that I feel that it's a bit wooden because it's for sure that it's a love affair with the great Irish people. They love what he does. King of the road, yes I'm a man. Ladies and gentlemen, saying everything I do, it's final four. I love hard workers, and these guys work their backsides off. Everything I do. Looking good. Thank you. Now, as well as your love of pink, which you have two pink items on. That's right. Yes, yeah. and Catwoman. Um, you like angels as well. That's right. I'm into the angels, and so is my aunt. She actually gave me a pin uh, for a good luck charm. So I'm wearing it at the moment. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> I, can't, I can't see it. Sorry, we've been nosy. <laughs> it's actually pinned onto my knickers. <laughs> Don't ask me to show you. No, no, I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to. No, no, that would have been totally wrong. Okay, what are you going to sing for us? I'm going to sing Heaven is a Place on Earth, Belinda Carlisle. Okay, over you go. 
I'll just gather myself. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, seeing heaven is a place on earth, it's Gene Elliott. Tonight, you've, you've gone into overdrive, and I think you've sacrificed your vocal for that presentation. Linda may have a point that the vocal may, may not have been up to uh, the standard of the previous, previous week, but I have to score a full marks for giving it a full effort. I mean, that's, that's, that's a real There you Just a moment. I can't get my head around the possibility of Phil Coulter going to represent Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe the magic in your eyes. Will you still love me tomorrow? I thought it was the best performance yet. I, I like I like you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm singing Take It Easy, it's Gary O'Malley. Gary's got a lot of good qualities. Uh, he can tune his guitar, which is always welcome. <laughs> and he plays well, he's got a good voice, and he picks good songs. I'm just not convinced that amongst those qualities is a star quality. Such a lonesome time I can't stop watching you On talent and on maturity and the ability to just take control of that stage, I think Chris can go all the way. So I just live my life in dreams of yesterday Hello, good evening, and you're very welcome to your star, live in the Helix. The real George Murphy celebrates his 18th birthday tonight. Happy birthday, George. I'm, be I'm beginning to wonder, is there a George or is there always a Luke Kelly? I think George Murphy is a breath of fresh air. I really do. I think he's, as I said last week, he's a unique item. I think the whole country's fallen for him, and I've fallen for him as well. I think he's great. Good night, Harry. Good night. Three weeks in a row, topping the poll, George Murphy. Good night, George. And so it was a fond and sad farewell to Phil and Jill and Ruth. This is when it gets really cruel, because both of the acts have brought a lot to the party. Phil and Jill, nobody has worked harder than Phil and Jill, and I've always been a huge fan of Ruth's natural voice. It's tough, and we're really sorry to see you go, but that's show business. We feel that we performed well, and as long as we have something to look back yeah. on and be proud of, then definitely. we're happy. we're proud of what we did anyway, so, definitely. Yeah. It's so tough to have to go, Oh, 
Week 5 and the Mania goes up another gear as our seven finalists become household names and take on the original creators of Music Mania, The Beatles. While I'm away, I'll ride home every day and I'll send all... The only problem I have with James is that he reminds me of Daniel O'Donnell and I think one Daniel O'Donnell is enough in any country. I kind of agree with Louis about the Daniel O'Donnell bit, but I don't agree with his conclusion, because I actually think there's nothing wrong with being Daniel O'Donnell. I think I'm a lot worse than Daniel O'Donnell. There may be similarities. We come from the west of Ireland. Our backgrounds could be quite similar. Vocally, we're very different. I'll ride home every day And I'll send all my loving to you Harmony. <laughs> we all want to do it. <laughs> Who was it? Martin or Lee? He's lying. He's lying. He's lying. I think it was you, Lee, and it was beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I did it. I did it. You deserve the success tonight. That was superb. Now, last week you told us of your little lucky angel. That's right. And you had it attached to an item of clothing which we couldn't see. <laughs> it is on your person again, is it? I am. I'm wearing it again tonight. Uh, Just for you, Ray. Where is it? <laughs> Looking forward to next week already. <laughs> what are you going to sing for us? I'm going to sing Come Together. Okay. I really, really liked doing the Come Together and the Beatles week. I liked the whole performance, I liked all the elements in the song. The transformation that I made throughout the show has been definitely my own idea. I just said, right, I've got to change things here. I'm being completely boxed into one category, and I knew I could do much more than that. I just saw a vision and I wanted to wear a suit and I wanted the hat and I wanted a chair to use as a prop. Come together right now over me. Ladies and gentlemen, singing the long and winding road, it's Chris Dorn. Such a long time ago. He gets better and better week after week. If the show is called You're a Star, and Chris, you're a star tonight. Thanks, Lee. Lead me to your door. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, singing Working Class Hero, it's George Murphy. Working Class Hero was my favourite week. I think it was the most comfortable I ever was on that stage because it's my favourite song of all time. I just imagined like I was in an empty room performing it like for myself. But first you must learn how to smile as you kill. I've been getting a little irritated with people saying that uh, they want to hear George Murphy sing like something other than Luke Kelly. For me, he sounded like Luke Kelly when he sang Lag and Road. It hasn't sounded like Luke Kelly since. That sounded nothing like Luke Kelly. That sounded like George Murphy, and it was brilliant. Thanks very much, Bill. It's now four weeks in a row. George Murphy, well done again. Come in, George. Let's go. Come on. It was a sad case of hello goodbye for Laura 
and Gary. I have to say that this is a great learning curve. It's great experience for her. She's only 17. It's the first competition she's ever entered. And I think I think we're going to be seeing Laura come back. I'm sorry Gary is going, but somebody has to go, you know? Yes. And I mean, it's been a great start for them, for the music business, and I think both of them are going to do really well. I would recommend them to anybody, anywhere for a game. I am disappointed because I, I thought... You know, I thought I'd done enough, and coming third every week, it just kind of, you know, but I, I never take anything for granted, so. I liked all my performances since I came into the competition, so, you know, I can't exactly go that I left myself down in a couple of weeks, because I haven't. Week six, the final five left, including final four, if that makes sense, singing Lounge Love in front of everyone's favourite young fogey, Ryan Tuberty, who falls for Jean and her angelic knickers. When I can have all the love you write, I memorize. The week that I felt most uncomfortable, and at the same time felt sure on my performance, was, was with, with love letters. I think tonight was, was not his best performance. I'm sorry, James, but it, for me that didn't work. There were a couple of pitch problems and a few problems that I spoke to James about earlier on, breathing problems. His vibrato was coming through too strong. It was almost like he was running out of breath at the end of the lines. Everybody is entitled to their opinion, but I do not believe I went flat at any stage through that song. From your Trains in tonight, George Murphy. Strangers in the night, two lonely people we were. I like George. That was not his best performance yet. And I think he's going to have a big career. I think he might have a bigger career by not going to Eurovision. Little did we know, love was just a glance. He's third this week. Well done, George Murphy. Well done. The only time I ever thought like that I had a chance of going all the way was while I was topping the pole. But then as soon as I slipped down to towards, I knew that I wasn't going to get back up to the top. My favourite song to, to sing would have been Someone to Watch Over Me because um, it's just, it just really suited my voice. I was really comfortable. I really sat into the song. I haven't been one of uh, Jean's biggest fans in recent weeks and, in fact, might have been one of her harsher critics. But tonight, I think she finally, finally hit her stride. She is the Downing Street dossier. She's completely sexed up in this competition. She's gone from the girl next door to the girl upstairs. She should be representing us in Turkey. She is the star of this piece. She's the only one who's going to win it. Well done. Beautiful piece of music. good it's getting better great song great choice of song very well sung i'm happy thank you obviously i was second for the first four weeks and i put in an awful lot of hard work and eventually it started paying off because i can't come first chris dorn top the ball <laughs> in the room, Chris was released from second place and then we were left with the final four not including final four whose departure was slightly overshadowed as James Relief turned to kissing He kissed me! Oh my god, come on, get up 
<laughs> How do you feel, Peter? That's okay, you know. We're doing all right over, you know. And, and Phil and Louis and Linda, they've all said you have a future ahead of yourselves. Harmonies are good, you did hugely well. We really enjoyed you on the show. Final four, ladies and gentlemen. Week seven and we're down to four. The heat was rising as our finalists got to sing country and Eurovision. My favourite week was the week that we that we sang the country song. I really enjoyed that night. She had a need to feel the thunder. You found your niche, that's the sort of song that you should sing always. It suited you, it suited your voice, you sat with the song very, very well, and I quite enjoyed it. <laughs> Gina's my favourite girl on the show tonight. She really is. <laughs> but she deserves to be successful in the music business because she works really, really hard. She's very versatile. She's very professional. She sang country song tonight. She sang a pop song last week. You know, I think she'd be great for Eurovision. Absolutely. If she wants to represent Ireland in the Eurovision. I would have absolutely no problem saying that I'm Irish having her represent this country. Go to Turkey. If you want anybody to do it, was now so I'd be delighted to do it. For you. <laughs> I thought it was lovely, superbly sung. I can vividly recall Chris at last year's edition in Kilkenny, and I remember being impressed right back then. He's come a long way since then, and you know what? He's got the talent and the temperament to go an awful lot further. Everybody knows one song, song. From the first night I saw George singing, um, I, I was taken back by him. Um, for George's own sake, I wouldn't like to see George represent Ireland in the Eurovision. I'd rather go and see him doing his, you know, his own thing. Okay, thanks, Keith. It was a harsh Neil Point for former pole topper oh, George. George. Getting voted off, like when I sang Song Song Blue. It was very hard to take. It seemed to all come to a kind of sudden stop. Like four weeks in a row, following week towards, following week gone. I knew it was going to come eventually. I always had a feeling that Chris was going to catch me. Week eight and the songs arrive. And with them, the extra pressure to get to our grand final. I think that was a superb performance. I think the song suits him like a I love that the dynamic between the softness at the, at, the, at the start of the song and then the bigger voice at the end. I thought that that, that graph in the song was perfect and he deserves full marks. Commend uh, Brian McFadden on, on doing. Uh, I think he done a fantastic job and getting a great song out there. And uh, Chris's delivery has been just brilliant. I, I, it got me. It really did. I was singing along. It was brilliant. This is absolute quality. I think that was game, set, and match.
joining Chris in our grand final, Linda. Part of me. Our performances have improved week after week. Nobody's worked harder. We're very sorry to see you, though. Thanks, Phil. She would have been a great person to send to Eurovision, but you know, she's a long career ahead of her. She had lots of the vital ingredients for Eurovision, and I'm just going to miss you. It's a shame, but best of luck for the future. It was farewell so to the girl with the angel and the final stage is set for a Waterford versus Mayo showdown. The gloves were off as James and Chris went head to head for a ticket to Turkey. And sometimes when we touch the honesty is too much and I have to close my eyes and hide. We're now at the stage where we're going to send somebody, one of these two lads, to Turkey. That's a real cauldron, believe me. I've been at those Eurovision finals. And it's essential we send somebody who's got the big match temperament. And I've said it all along, when the heat is on, I think Chris will be able to deliver it. And I think he's delivered. The show is called You're a Star. This guy is a star. Send him to Eurovision. Rose, you're a snowboard woman. You make me sing like a guitar humming. When James came for the first edition or the second edition and sang, I would never, ever imagine that he would have been here in the final two. I think he deserves great credit. I think his wife and kids should be immensely proud of him. Because you know what? It's not about what supposed experts like me think. It's not about what supposed experts in the music business think. It's about what the people in Ireland think. And the people in Ireland love this. They do indeed. They do indeed. It's a great song. I'm delighted. I couldn't have asked for a better song. Brian's a great writer, and I just think the song is it's, it's an excellent song. I'm delighted and privileged to be able to sing it. It's the Eurovision Song Contest. Song Contest. And I think at this stage, I can't sit on the fence any longer. We have got to send the best song to Europe. In my professional opinion as a songwriter, that's the best song. receiving the song and immediately the chorus came out at me. I like it. It's soulful. There's a good feel to it and it was well matched with me. I'm very comfortable with it. James did a really good job. He sang the song really, really well. It's a very nice song. Everybody in Mayo is very proud of him. Well done. Then came the moment of truth with an hour-long special results show that saw Gary, Clada, Colin, Philip, Ruth, Laura, Phil and Jill, Final Four, George and Jean all return to the Helix for one last song.
Accusations are causing me suspicion, but there's no proof. In the paper today, tales of war and of ways. But you turn right over to the TV page. To the TV page. Hey now, hey now, don't dream. With the pressure off, Chris and James got to relax by doing what they do best, singing, without worrying about judges or phone votes. There must be life, got to be birds flying higher in the sky. Maybe if I can dream of a better land where all my brothers walk in. Sometimes strong winds are blowing to blow away the doubt and fear. If I could dream of a warmer sun where hope keeps shining on everyone, tell me why. Tell me why. Oh, On behalf of Chris and James and everyone here on Eurostar, thanks for your support. You've already made these two men into stars, and you're about to make one of them into a musical ambassador for Ireland. This is it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the crunch moment. Through the night, your votes have been counted and tallied under the watchful eye of Michael O'Neill from Price Waters Cooper. The person with the highest number of votes will be crowned Eurostar champion of 2004, and more importantly, we'll travel to Istanbul in May to represent Ireland in the Eurovision Song Contest. Now normally, at this time, Linda, the series producer, whispers the result in my ear. But the tension here in the Helix tonight is so intense that neither of us were sure that we could handle the responsibility. So will you please welcome on stage the man who oversaw the vote last night and is now in possession of that all-important final result. From PricewaterhouseCooper, it's Michael O'Neill. Michael, thank you very much. Thank you. Your fate, 
is in this envelope and everybody watching this tonight is feeling for you right now. It's a tough moment for both of you. They've done unbelievably, hugely well to get this far. Chris Dorn and James Kilban. Okay, let's do it then. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of Eurostar 2004 and the person who will represent Ireland in the Eurovision Song Contest is... Chris Dorn! Well, there you have it. We went from 5,000 to 1. And now it's from the Helix to Turkey. What a journey. We hope you enjoyed the trip as much as we did. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's the song and the man who will represent us in the 49th Eurovision Song Contest on May the 15th. It's Chris Dorn singing, If My World Stop Turning. You gotta help me now. I can see my future when I'm looking in your eyes I can sense security Just by you being in my life A little voice inside my head Say you're an angel in disguise Without you I feel hopeless Without you I'm deprived Wish I could describe it All the love I feel inside Find the words that will make you realize My life seems near perfect When I got you in my arms That's when I feel wholesome That's when I'm with you If my world stops turning in the morning And if God should take this song away Comes as a surprise. That we speak so long apart, even more than I survive. And if I speak it frankly, there's only one thing I can say that I'm falling for you, baby. Falling further every day. If my world stops turning in the morning, and if God. Thank you.